anniversaries, and I know we have some. Happy birthday.
video moment this morning. It's just entitled Comfort, not Comfort Praises. It might make a little difference when you watch it. So, Kristen, if you will. Jesus, I am so excited today. It's like I woke up and thought today is the day to get working for Jesus. Kat, I'm so excited to find someone who's ready to take action and get things done. Oh, man, I am that girl. Exactly. Yeah. I've got something perfect for you. So let's get started. <laughs> what are you doing? Uh, stand up. Remember, we were going to take action. Yeah, but this is where I always sit. Right, but I need more than this. Oh, I know what you're getting at. Okay, Jesus, how much do you want? $50? Is that enough? Oh, uh, that's not what I meant. Oh, uh, all right. Well, a hundred then, you know. You drive a hard bargain. Uh, okay, um, okay, but um, you might not want to catch this till next Friday. You know what I'm saying? Right. There you go. Okay, Kat, really, I, I do think it's great that you want to get but I want you to mentor a younger woman. Ooh, yeah, right. Well, Jesus, you know, I'm not really into, like, teaching people and stuff. I mean, I'm not, I don't really get into that. Okay, um, okay, you, you know that woman at the office, Amy? Yeah. I want you to take her out to lunch. Tell her about me. Um, well, Amy is different. I mean, like, really different, you know? I know, but she needs to know about me. Mm, and I can tell people at the church to call her. I mean, they get paid to do things like that. I want you to do that. Jesus, I just don't feel comfortable doing that. <laughs> no, Kat. The problem is, you're too comfortable. <laughs> you have him do that, preacher. I had nothing to do with that. <laughs> but you may hear a little more about it later. <laughs> You've had a, if you've had a wonderful week this, this week, raise your hand. If, you had blessed, if you've been blessed this week, raise your hand. We are blessed people, without a doubt. We do have several who will be traveling this week. Gary Beth and Nan will be some of the many who will be traveling this fall break. So uh, remember all those in your prayers. Also, some who are still recovering and some who are facing surgeries. Is there anyone on your hearts and minds right now that we need to lift up in prayer? Bill Cotton and Ryan Cotton.
put on their Ricky Allen family. Others. My grandson Cody has a friend. He's been here before, and uh, there's they're not the family's not telling this either. But there's a uh, something going on. That he, he wants prayers. Continue to remember Joan Moore. She was not able to have her chemo on Thursday. Others. Will you pray with me, please? Almighty and powerful God, we thank you for being in our presence on this day. Father, we thank you for the blessings that you have poured out upon us this week. Father, we are so undeserving, and yet through your love and grace and mercy for us, you continue to fill up our cup. And I think I speak for all of us when... I say our cup truly runneth over. So, Father, we thank you for the blessings that you have laid upon us and poured out to us this week. And, Father, I just pray for the ones we have mentioned on this day, uh, the names that have been on our hearts and on our minds, and the families of those that we have mentioned. I pray, Father, that you be with them. You are the great physician. You are the healer of all things. So I pray, Father, that, that you make yourself present among them at this time that they may feel you pass by. Father, be with them now. Be with us as we worship you. For it's in your precious holy name that we pray. Amen. I do apologize just for a moment. Uh, and I have it right here in front of me where I could not miss it. And I missed it. I do have a thank you uh, letter from Brother Dave and Carol which says this, Dear Fredoni Church family, as you will duly know that I have delayed sending you a thank you note. The reason is that I don't have the words to express how I feel about you. Thank you for receiving my leadership and always encouraging me. I believe with all my heart that the ministry of the good news through Christ Jesus will flourish through Brother Mark's leadership. And thank you for the wonderful gift you gave me. You must have thought I like to eat, and you are right. <laughs> <laughs> Love, Brother Dave and Carol. Just a side note on Brother Dave, he will be preaching the installation service next Sunday night. So, keep him in your prayers. I'm going to ask you to stand as we do our last song, He Leadeth Me, 461 first and last. He Leadeth Me.
Because he didn't get to see it this morning because he was running away. Tucker? Look up around the screen. Who is that? My day. That's what he told me last time I put it up there, and I cannot deny it. So maybe it is. We don't know. Chris Tomlin has a wonderful new album out called uh, Chris Tomlin and Friends. And it is not a typical Chris Tomlin album. It has got a lot of country sound to it. It's got some jazz to it. And I'm going to do a song this morning that is not my style, but... Sometimes you argue with God and leave, don't you, buddy? Um, you ever think about your home? You know how we do stuff at home, and I know with COVID, a lot of people have been doing stuff, and fall weather, decorating for fall, and just, we love our home, don't we? You love your forever home? Are you excited to get there? You ever thought about what it's going to be like? Just, uh, just listen to this country song about forever home. Tucker, I'm nervous with you. <laughs> I love this little house we got out on the edge of town. It's hard to think that we could be we think we got it good watching the sunset from the steps. It looks like heaven, but we ain't seen nothing yet. When we get to our forever home, we'll see beauty like we've never known. Angels singing hallelujah songs. Hard to imagine one day all this gravel turns to street. Time goes by and we won't ever get old. It's a picture perfect place. I can't wait to see your face when we get to our forever home. Me and you will be forever home. Yeah, we'll leave all of our words just like work boots on the porch. And all our loved ones that we hanging out when we walk through the door. Yeah, we'll catch up on the good times and we'll have a million more. No, there ain't no telling what he's got in store. When we get to our forever home, we'll see beauty like we've never known. Angels singing hallelujah songs. One day, all this gravel turns to streets of gold. Time goes by and we won't ever get old. It's a picture perfect place. I can't wait to see your face when we get to our forever home. Me and you will be forever home. When we get to our forever We'll have everything we'd ever want. Hard to imagine one day all this gravel turns to streets of gold. Time goes by and we won't ever get old. It's a picture perfect place. I can't wait to see your face when we get to our forever.
thank you, Reese, for that beautiful message and song. And I think it falls right in with what I've uh, been given today. And, and I hope in some element each and every Sunday you hear my excitement about my one day forever home. And that is something, folks, that we've been given as a promise and something we look forward to. And I am looking forward to that each and every day. But for my now home, I, I just want to share this with you. Again, thank you all. We're, we're getting close. I, we, uh, we're going to have an open house as soon as we can. We're, we're working on that. Uh, everything's coming together. And if you ever want an evening of entertainment, we love our, we love our home. But I tell you what, come, come to the house. You're invited anytime. Call. Make sure that we're there. Most of the time we are just we're going to Tennessee. But uh, call. Make sure we, we'll get a chair out. And this is what we'll do. I'll pop some popcorn and we'll watch Miss Brenda chase kids in one house. And we'll watch Tally chase kids in another house. And it's just wonderful. And then old Daisy in between. It's something going on every afternoon. But they can also tell you how much fun they watch. They like watching the crazy preacher about banging on something in the garage, too. It's just great. We have a wonderful time. And I love the community. Uh, we've been out walking. Well, I've been following Miss Kim, but we've been trying to walk. She's doing a little better than I am, so it's just been great. I got to go to the farm store the other day. So, and, of course, Coon Dog, hey, we're, we're, we're doing good. But we're going to have an open house soon, and uh, we'll, we'll let, keep you more informed about that as time goes here. I'll be reading this morning from the Gospel according to John, and you'll hear me say this quite a bit, but it's probably my favorite scripture in the whole Bible. I, I love this story. Uh, I'll be reading from John 11. I'll be starting with the 20th verse in John chapter 11, uh, verse 20. I'll be reading through verse number 26. Would you please stand with me as we observe the reading of God's word this morning. But first, let us go to him in prayer. Father, again, we thank you for this day that you have blessed us with. I pray, Father, that uh, you just speak to us now the words that we need to hear. Open our eyes to what you would have for us to see. And as always, Father, it is my prayer that the words that are spoken from this point forward be not mine, but yours. For it's in your precious holy name that I pray. Amen. Martha, therefore, when she heard that Jesus was coming, went to him, but Mary stayed at the house. Martha then said to Jesus, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. Even now I know that whatever you ask of God, God will give you. And Jesus said to her, your brother will rise again. And Martha said to him, I know that he will rise again in the resurrection on the last day. And Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me will live even if he dies. And everyone who lives and believes in me will never die. Do you believe this? Amen. May the Lord bless this reading of his holy word. You may be seated. <laughs> Do you believe? Do you really believe? I often wonder just how many times throughout their three-year journey with Jesus that the disciples were asked this question. And I had no doubt that they believed in him. Every step, they had questions, but they believed. Remember, they left everything behind to follow this man. So they believed. Peter even after Jesus ascended on the behalf of the remaining disciples, spoke of them and confessed Jesus to be the Christ. He is the Messiah. Jesus is the one. But I often wonder how far did their belief in him go? What conditions did they place upon that belief? And I often wonder the same thing about us. Word was sent to Jesus. You know this story. That his very dear friend Lazarus was sick. And after the some, some discussion, I, I picture this in my mind, they, they were walking down the road in route to see Lazarus. And Peter said, perhaps he's not dead. Maybe he's just asleep. And then John perhaps saying, well, he, he, he's not asleep. Maybe he's just very, very tired. And Jesus said, whoa, 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 whoa guys. Let's make no mistake about it before we get there. Lazarus is, he's dead. He's dead, dead. So they make their journey to Bethany. And when they arrive, they find out when they get there, they hear wind and news that Lazarus has already been in the tomb for four days. And when they approach Bethany, they notice that this large crowd had already gathered at the home to mourn the loss of Lazarus. And then Martha hears in the commotion that Jesus is coming, and she runs out to meet him. 
And when she found Jesus, she says, Lord, if you would have been here, my brother would not have died. And Jesus looks at her and, and basically asks that same question to her again. Do you believe? Martha, your brother will rise again. And she did believe. So much to the fact that she immediately responded, I know that whatever you ask of God, however you ask it, whenever you ask it, God will give it to you. I know that my brother will rise again on the resurrection in the last day. Now, I want to stop right there just for a moment. Because I, I, I think that we're right there with Martha. I think we're there. We're on, on that same level. I, I think that if I were to go around this, this room this morning right now, it is my hope that I would find that everyone in here today believes that one day, one day, we will be resurrected. I think it's safe to say that, that we all believe that a day is coming. That when we would die, we will we'll receive our reward that is to come, our forever home. Amen. Do you believe that? Amen. 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 I mean, and, and that's great. Nothing wrong with that whatsoever. And I so, so look forward to that day. But the problem is, far too many times, that is where our belief ends. And I'm going to explain. Jesus looks at Martha and he says, I am. And oh, by the way, Martha, that God that you were speaking of just, just a few moments ago in your words, I am Amen. the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me, there's that question again. He who believes in me will live even if he dies. And everyone who lives and believes in me will never die. Listen, here it is again. Do you believe this? I want to come back to that in a few moments, but I want to move forward with the story. They take Jesus to the tomb. And scriptures tell us that he was deeply moved in the spirit, was troubled. And some translations say that his very spirit groaned in utterance. And then we read the shortest verse in the Bible, which is, Jesus. Oh man, you guys are great. Jesus <laughs> wept. Now we need to notice this. From start to finish, everything that Jesus done throughout his earthly ministry was in the moment. Everything. He didn't wait to cry when he left or after he left. He didn't wait for, for, for the one year anniversary of Lazarus death to show any type of emotion. He didn't wait for something in the future to happen. There, right there in their presence, surrounded by people, Jesus wept. Some of you will even remember him saying this. Are there not 12 hours in the day? If anyone walks in the day, he does not stumble because he sees the light of the world. In other words, folks, you can walk in the light today. Right now. Here. If you believe. Amen. So Jesus walks over to the tomb and he instructs those who are standing around Remove the stone. And then the story, at least to me, and maybe I'm somewhat more of it, takes a rather humorous turn to me. I can almost picture Martha bursting through the crowd when Jesus tells them to roll the stone back. Lord, 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 have you lost your mind? <laughs> I mean, do you not have any kind of idea what kind of stench is going to come out of that tomb once that stone is rolled away? I don't know a whole lot about the stench of a decaying, dead human body, but I, I do know this very vividly, as some of you will know. I remember one of my first trips ever to Kentucky Dam as a very small child. We pull up there, and immediately after we open the door, this stench just hits me like nothing had ever hit me before. And I, I didn't want to get out, and I didn't know what was down there, but I didn't need to look if it smelled that bad. <laughs> It was fish. Dead fish. And, you know, I, I come from McLean County slash Newburgh where backwater affects us all the time. It's all nice and pretty while the water is there. It causes some problems. But then water goes down, you know it for two months because it stinks. I'll even give you another example. Have you ever walked out to your deep freeze in the evening trying to find some ground beef? And what you don't know is your deep freeze has been out for about two weeks. <laughs> You know it pretty quick, don't you, after you open the lid. It stinks. 
I think we all get a very vivid picture, or we should. But Jesus looks at her again, and he says these words. Did I not say to you that if you believe, you will see the glory of God? So they remove the stone, and then Jesus did something, and I, I, I underlined this. He raised his eyes. And by the way, folks, here's another huge difference between us and Jesus. Kim and I can be out somewhere. We could be driving. We could be at home in our new home. And I can tell you, I can say something that's absolutely brilliant. That's just wonderful. I mean, I think it's ground shaking. And I look over at her and she's. <laughs> <laughs> I've done the same and seen y'all do too. So. But mark this down. I did, I underlined it. Every time that you read about this, Jesus doing this, in the Bible, folks, you better get out your cameras. You better sharpen your pencil because you're going to need to write what happens down next. And Jesus raised his eyes to the Father and he said, Father, I, I thank you that you have heard me. And I know that you always hear me. But because of these people who are standing around me, I said it so that they may believe that you sent me. And then picture this with me, folks. Jesus stretches out his hands and he cried out with a loud voice, Lazarus, come forth. I love to have been there. The, the man who had died came forth, bound hand and foot with wrapping. His face was wrapped with a cloth. And Jesus said to him, unbind him and let him go. And they saw what he had done, and then they believed in him. Did anybody see that? I don't want to call anybody's ages out, but was anybody there? But how many of you in here today believe that that happened again? Raise your hand. But folks, of course you do, but far too many times that is the extent of our belief. You see, we generally don't have any kind of problem whatsoever of believing that something awaits us in the future. And it does. Uh, we do not have a problem whatsoever, I hope we don't, of believing that one day God will usher in his kingdom. And we don't have any trouble, I pray, believing these stories from the Bible happened a long time ago. I believe in the ark. I believe in the whale. I believe that that wall at Jericho, I believe it came down. You know, we don't have a problem believing that God can do anything for somebody else, do we? You seen the prayer list? Maybe you said that I heard this week. I'll pray for you. Oh, you just need to give it to God. You need to just, how about going to church? And I'm going to be the first to tell you, now, you're going to hear me say this far from the past problem. I'm guilty. Preacher's guilty. You know, I, I can't wait. And I've already said this. I can't wait for the master to one day, someday, say, Mark, come forth. And in my defense, who in here is not with me? But you know, but as I, I, I studied this scripture this week, I, I was reminded of a few things. Everything about Jesus, the stories, the miracles, the sacrifice, the coming to earth, it's all meant to be personal. Sorry. Personal. Because I promise you this, you were on his mind from the beginning, and you will be on his mind for the rest of eternity. When he was on the cross, I was on his mind. You were on his mind when he was being beaten and crucified. And the stories that we read and we cherish and we, we agree happened, folks, we're in, we're in all of them. Do you understand that? You ever been to Blind Beggar? I have. I've been Simon Peter. I've been the Apostle Paul. Uh oh, I've been Judas. And oh yes, I have certainly been Lazarus. Jesus told Martha, I am the resurrection and the life. Everyone who lives and believes in me will never die. 
Well, Jesus came, and we can study this, and we do. Jesus came for two reasons. He came to ensure that those who call upon him as Lord and Savior will one day be re reunited. We will have our forever home, and we will live with the saints with him in heaven. But I also believe this, and this is the part we sometimes forget, that he came so that we may be able to live life to the fullest right now. And for this reason, I'm Lazarus. Now, I know some of you are thinking, despite his long locks, <laughs> I am standing here on my own. I, I, I am standing up here speaking, breathing. I, you look alive to me. But as I stand before you, I can tell you what this grace of honesty is. I don't have to wait for that someday to, to come when Jesus stretches his hands out and cries out, Mark, come forth. Because once being dead, folks, I have already heard it. That's right. Jesus has already looked at me and then looked up to the heavens and proclaimed to the heavens, Father, I thank you that you have heard me. This is the one who was once dead who now lives. He is one of mine, and praise his name, I stand in place of him. Right. Do you believe that? Amen. But again, you probably do because it's coming from the preacher, someone else. But do you believe it about yourself? Are you, who were once dead, alive today? As personal folks. And sometimes it's hard to believe. And here, here's why. I'm going to ask you a question. I, I know we've all lost loved ones, or at least most of us. Now, if you've lost a loved one, let's say for a period of days, and all of a sudden you look up, and that lost person is standing there in your midst, what are you going to do? Scream? Pass out? Jump up and run and hug them? All three, but maybe not in that order. <laughs> but here's what they did not do, which to me would seem rather obvious, at least in those first few moments that Lazarus came out. Jesus said, unbind him and let him go. Now why on earth would Jesus say this? Why would he have to say this? Because folks, if, you, if you're still bound, Then it's, then it's extremely hard to believe that you are alive. You've been given a brand new life. But in many ways, you're still dead. Think about it. You can't move your arms. You can't move your legs. You still got cloth around your eyes, so you're still living in darkness. Lazarus was alive, but he was still bound. He was bound with grave clothes, wasn't he? Remember how he got? Other people bound him. The consequences of sin bound him. Perhaps even poor choices and past mistakes bound him. The fact is that he, we could not live the life Jesus intended for us until we become unbound. Folks, if you are a child of God, you have already been resurrected from death to life. But sometimes that's so hard for us to believe because we continue over and over again to bind ourselves. Jesus has set you free. Amen. But yet we continue to bind ourselves with strained relationships. Jesus has set you free. But you continue to bind ourselves with sin. Jesus is saying to someone here today, let it go. But you choose to continue to hang on to past failures. Hang on to regrets. Hang on to poor choices. Jesus says, let it go. And I know 
far too many people who cannot live today because you are bound by the worries of yesterday or tomorrow. In closing this morning, I want to say this. Believe that one day we will stand in the presence of the Lord. Believe it with all your heart, mind, and soul. Believe that one day we're going to hear a great trumpet sound and Christ will return for his children. Believe that. Amen. But also believe that Christ came and Christ dwelt among us so that we may live life to the fullest, folks, right now. But even more importantly, <clears throat> believe that he is looking at you right now, perhaps even speaking you to you and saying, folks, whatever it is that's binding you, release it and let it go. Do you believe? Will you pray with me this morning, please? Our Heavenly Father, we are thankful for this yet another day that you have given and created for us. I pray, Father, that as we bow in your presence, that you help each of us, all of us, to live this day, to seek your will for our lives on this day, in this moment. Help us to unbind ourselves from troubles and trials that keep us from living the life that you intended for us to live. And help us to be more like the birds in, in, in creation that we may not worry about tomorrow, but yet in turn, may we place our full hope and trust in you. I ask all this in your name. Amen. Amen. <clears throat>